In this training video, we will go over protocols for completing rare plant seed collections. This video was created by Conservation Director Michael Piantadosi and adapted to the PCV program. Just to review some information from an earlier video, our goal for seed banking of rare species is the same as the International Convention on Biological Diversity Global Strategy for Plant Conservation, Target 8. At least 75% of threatened plants should be in ex situ collections, growing collections, and seed banks preferably in the country of origin, and at least 20% available for restoration and recovery programs. Seed banking and rare plant seed collections are a very large part of our program, and it is important for volunteers to help as much as they can. Our goal is to collect seed from species with 1 to 5 and 6 to 20 occurrences in New England, and to collect the most central, northern, eastern, southern, and western occurrences of rare plants on the New England landscape. We have developed these widely used guidelines and use this method both to rank priorities for seed banking and to identify species that are not amenable to standard seed banking conditions. Volunteers should check the Collect Seed column in the survey sign-up page to determine if a survey is targeted for seed collection in the upcoming season or not. If you sign up to conduct a seed collection, Native Plant Trust supplies all of the needed seed collection materials. We just ask that you email research botanist Jessa Finch roughly a month ahead of your first collection to let her know that you need a collection packet mailed to you. We have written protocols for collecting and banking rare plant seed, and we will go over the main points of the protocols now. I encourage you to also read the written protocols in your PCB handbook when you receive it, when you sign up for surveys this season, you will also notice a Collect Seed column in your Survey Assignment Summary page. If Collect Seed is listed in your Assignment Summary, this means that we want to preserve a sample of seed from this population and that seed collection will be the goal for this specific survey. If you are going out to collect seeds, you are also required to complete the Seed Collection section of the New England Rare Plant Reporting Form. Blank forms can be found on the Sprout website. Our protocols require collecting no more than 10% of seeds, meaning no more than 10% of seeds from any individual plant, from no more than 10% of the plants present in the whole population. We collect a low percentage of seeds to avoid causing any harm to the population or species. Seed banking is meant to be a method to help conserve a species, but we do not want to damage the population. We want to make sure there are seeds left on site to germinate and grow into the next generation of plants. For all rare plant seed collections, we do what is called a maternal line collection. Maternal line collections are separate collections for each individual plant. For the first 50 plants you collect from at a rare plant site, you must use a separate glassine envelope for each individual genet or genetically distinct plant to keep the seeds of one plant separate from another. If you collect in this manner for the first 50 plants and the population is large enough that collecting from more plants is possible while still staying within the 10% of seed collection at a site, you can collect the rest of the seeds into a larger glassine envelope or paper bag. If the collection is to be used for reintroduction in the future, we would like to have as many distinct individuals as possible represented, hence why we ask you to keep the seeds from different individuals in separate glassine envelopes. Make sure that when you complete a seed collection, you do your best to sample from as many different parts of the population as possible. This means collecting from not only the tallest, biggest, or prettiest plants, but the scrawny ones, the ones on the edge, and the shorter ones too. Please carefully label your seed collection with the state, species, EO number, date, site name, and your name. It is also a good idea to email Kate Wellspring, kwellspring at nativeplanttrust.org when you mail your seed collection with the tracking number for your package and the collection information. Sometimes seeds do get lost in the mail. Make sure you send your labeled, packaged seeds within one to three days of the collection. It is best if you can send them express or overnight. We want to make sure that the seeds are viable when they arrive. If you have to wait over the weekend or a few days before you can mail us your seed collections, please store them in a cool, dry place in your home. 
do not leave seeds in your car or in a hot or moist area. The risk of mold growing on the seeds or seed mortality is more likely. Please mail your seeds to Attention Kate Wellspring, The Sami Farm, Native Plant Trust, P.O. Box 205, Waitley, Massachusetts, 01093. Make sure you mail your seeds in a well-padded envelope, as seeds have been crushed by automated mail processing machines when shipped in plain envelopes in the past. A few tips on collecting seeds from rare plants. Timing is the most important factor for seed collection. Seed collection may take two or more site visits to identify the plant in flower and then collect ripe seed. Consult previous field forms to see if comments on seed ripeness or mature fruit were made. Use these comments as a guide and adjust survey times according to changes in the seasons between years. Depending on the year, spring may come late or early, changing the period for best seed collection. In general, seeds turn from green or white when unripe to brown when ripe, but the color of ripe seeds varies widely between species. In this series of photos shown on the slide, all of the seeds are ripe, however the color of ripe seed varies from species to species. If you are unsure if seeds or fruit are ripe or mature, do not collect them. If possible, dissect or cut fruit open and photograph the fruit or seeds and email the photos to Kate Wells to bring for her guidance. Seed is often ripe when it is being dispersed by the plant. Capsules will usually split or open, but some seed will be mature even before the capsule is split. If you shake a seed head and seeds fall out, or seeds come off easily when gently pulled or rubbed, the seed is probably ripe. For plants with fleshy fruits, the fruits should feel a bit soft when squeezed or fall off with a gentle pull, just like if you were picking fruits to eat from these two common tasty species, red raspberries, Rubus ideus, and beech plums, Prunus maritima. Please do not eat the fruits of rare species. Check to see if the embryo is filled. Seed can be cut open or pinched to check hardness in the field before you collect. You can also do a pressure probe test by pinching the seed between your fingers. If the seed is hard, it is ripe. If it is still soft, it is not. A light test can also be useful. Hold the seed in front of a high-powered light to assess if an embryo is there. A good seed would show up with a dark spot, the embryo, and an empty seed would have nothing. You will likely be given an estimate for when your species will be ripe based on previous observations or literature, but it may not be accurate for a given year. This idealized graph shows the process of seed formation over time, with percent viability in the vertical axis. You can see that the closer you are to the moment of natural dispersal, the moment the seed falls off or is blown off or carried off by an animal, is the moment when viability is highest. Abscission, when the seed no longer depends on the parent for nutrient inputs, is an invisible event. From now on, it completes its development and ripening on its own. Early after abscission, seeds have low viability, but viability rises rapidly soon after. The next slide gives some rules of thumb for detecting when a seed is ripe. Here is an example of a common sedge species with ripe fruit. This is bearded sedge, Carex scoparia, var scoparia, naturally dispersing its seed as evident by the brown color and some of the seeds missing in this photo. But not all of the seed is gone just yet. This plant is at an excellent point for collection. Here is another photo of a species with ripe fruit, common milkweed, Asclepius syriaca. This plant is also naturally dispersing its seed as evident by the seeds hanging and falling out of the seed pod. This is also an excellent point to collect seeds. The seeds are ready to be dispersed by the wind. We are also looking for volunteers to help clean seed at our Nasami Farm Nursery in Western Massachusetts. Volunteer seed cleaners and our part-time seed technician hand clean all of our rare plant seed collections. We need to clean them by hand because of the delicate nature of working with rare species and not wanting to lose any viable seeds in the process. Some seeds are super tiny while others are more manageable to clean. It all depends on the species. Please contact Kate Wellspring if you are interested in helping with seed cleaning. Our seed bank is located at Nasami Farm Nursery in Waitley, Massachusetts. We have a walk-in drying chamber, seed processing and testing equipment, and additional storage space for accessions. We are in a wonderful position to step up our seed conservation efforts, and that is where you come in. 
In your work monitoring rare plant populations, you have a great opportunity to help guarantee the long-term survival of these species and populations by participating in Native Plant Trust's seed banking efforts. Here is an image of our seed storage and cleaning room, complete in an environmentally controlled room, as you can see the environ air controls to the left, to ensure that seeds stay at specific temperature and humidity. Here are some of our seed bank cleaning and accessioning equipment. Following seed cleaning and drying, seeds are sealed in a vacuum foil pack and placed in our seed bank for freezing indefinitely until needed for use in species research, mitigation, or remediation. The next few images show this process. A final view of the seed cleaning room and the environmental control fans to keep it at just the right temperature for seed storage. Thank you for watching. Please contact the botanical coordinator if you have any questions.